We have a lot of people with kids like two and under. Yeah. How can they, I know in general, you're not a huge fan of multitasking. What do you recommend when it's kids who you can't, I mean, they can maybe get up to 30 minutes of independent play, but beyond that, they really need to be stimulated, entertained, or watched because they're crawling and walking and a danger to themselves. Right. Okay. So I think like short bursts of undivided attention are really good, right? So it's like, if you know you're going to get 30 minutes of playtime by yourself from your kid, just plan for that. Plan for 30 minutes, plan to spend 30 minutes with them after that or 15 minutes or whatever it is, and then mm-hmm. plan to go back to your work and, and okay. like kind of go back and forth. Because I think that like, of course you can't plan exactly when this is gonna happen because you don't know when your kid's gonna start crying or you don't know all of these things. But I think that like just plan, you know kind of what their attention span is for things and have a lot of like new things at the ready. Like you can still get Amazon deliveries, right? And, <laughs> Like, if you can have a new toy that you bring out, or if you can have, like, a new book. Also, you know, there are, like, I am not a huge fan of screens in general. I'm a fan of screens right now, right? Like, I think under two is a little, you know, it's a little young, but, like, what are you going to do sometimes? Like, sometimes you're in a meeting and you just have to, right? Yeah. So, not that we should rely on that 100% of the time, but I think it is kind of, like, there are there are very good like educational type things out there right now. Um, I also like think back to, you know, when my kids were babies and like I would be cooking and I needed them to not be in the kitchen. It's like set up the playpen or set up, you know, yeah. like the little guards so that they can't actually hurt themselves. And think about this being a good time to encourage some independent play. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like it, I just want to recognize that this is 100% harder for anyone who has toddlers or babies than it is for anyone who has kids who can say, read, you know, yeah. like just yeah. a huge difference. If you've got kids in the, like in the middle zone, like in kind of like three, four or five, where they, they, maybe they can't read yet, but like they can also do some independent play. You can also set up like um, audible for kids and have it read to them. You can, yeah. Amazon Alexa has like Alexa story time that you can enable. And that'll read books to kids. And I'm pretty sure if you have Alexa, that's just a free skill that it can do. Um, So there are things that you can set up that aren't just like a screen in front of their face, but can still keep them interested. And for screens, we actually have seen people doing, um, when they're a little like four or five, doing entertaining by grandparents virtually. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Like like setting up FaceTimes and they're like (laughs) doing it in the, we had somebody saying the other day, you know, and if something happens, my parents just say my name loud enough to get my attention. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that. Like, if you have other people that you can, you know, like grandparents who can, or they want to see your kids all the time anyways, right? Exactly. So win-win. <laughs> yeah, win-win for everyone here. Yeah, exactly. 